Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. So I am so excited to jump straight into today's video. Today is a very important um, topic to be discussing and it is around the waiting season. So today's video topic is what do you do in the waiting season? Now we all go through that season where it's time for waiting for the big thing that you have been praying about or waiting for something that you just feel like you need. We either entering a waiting season or we are exiting a waiting season. Now I, like most of you, have been through many of um, this kind of seasons and it's kind of painful to say the least. What is a waiting season? Why do you have to go through it? Why must you wait in order to get what you want? Um, and this is obviously the main reason like let's think about the practical things that we wait for on a day-to-day -day basis um let's just use cooking for ex for an example so if you want to eat a delicious uh, let's say you want to eat a very delicious meal for dinner there's preparation that needs to take place you know at a specific time you can have dinner you know there i know there's some people that has dinner for breakfast there's such a thing as that and I'm, I'm like a huge fan of uh, breakfast for dinner so uh, if you're that kind of person that's not what I'm really talking about so I'm just sharing this example about um, having dinner at a specific time so if dinner time is allocated from 4 to around 8 maybe um, you know that you're not going to be eating dinner till then you're going to be consuming your your breakfast your lunch and some snacks uh, during the day but you know that you are working during the day or you may be busy and your mom at home or maybe you have to go home to prepare that dinner to, uh, that dinner meal to have with your family you know you can't have it during your work time imagine phoning up your husband or phoning up you know the, your family members and telling them to come to your workplace or your college or your school and then having that dinner time in school or at work uh, with your family imagine just think about how crazy that looks like your entire family come to you at maybe like 12 o'clock in the day and they all are having dinner with you at your school table or at your work desk i'm sure your friends and your colleagues are going to be like what in the world is going on uh why is she having eating like supper with her family at this part of the time in the wrong place you know so that's basically, it's a weird example, but I kind of want to put you in, um, I'm leading up to something, so hang with me, right? So that's basically how it looks when we try to rush a waiting season uh, for something. So just say the dinner is what you was waiting for, and you really want that whole experience, the family time, the laughter, the talking around the table, uh, just that whole experience of dinner time. Everybody has their own specific type of dinner time in their homes but generally speaking a lot of us sit and talk around the table at dinner time we all sit around the table we all talk we all have that delicious meal that our moms are cooking or we are cooking sometimes we want to rush everything and we want everything to be perfect uh, at an earlier time in our life or at a wrong time for that gift and it's not going to work out it's not the right place it's not the right environment it's not the right food it's not the right uh, company to be having that gift and experiencing it now if you hand it over to god the thing that you've been praying for the thing that you wanted if you hand it over to god and you go through the season of waiting knowing that it's going to come but it's not my time it's god's time then you will get what you need in the perfect Time. Now that I got my crazy example out of the way, um, what do you do in the waiting time? So what what is it that you have to do in order to get your mind out of the thing, out of the thoughts of I'm waiting for my gift, I'm waiting for my gift, I'm waiting for my gift. What do you do? There's the type of people that are clouded by the thoughts that are constantly becoming more and more bigger in your mind every day. The clouded thoughts are the negative thoughts that are coming into your mind. Your, your mind is clouded with so much of things going on. You're still focused 
on the thing that you want and you don't want to you know focus on anything else right now it feels like a giant in your life and in your mind and there's no other way around it i have been in my waiting season i remember being um almost so fixated on my dream on the goal on the thing that i wanted so bad for the first half of my waiting season it felt like nothing was happening it felt like there was i don't know it just felt like i was standing still and the, and everybody else was moving everybody else was progressing everybody else was just thriving and living their best life and here i was trying to figure myself out and trying to figure out how am i going to get closer to the goal when i don't know where to start every day would feel like the same bad dream that i would wake up in and that was just like a repetitive thing that just kept on happening and i remember just being so clouded by this big thing that i want to achieve and it felt so big because i would wake up every day thinking about trying to get the thing that i wanted and getting out of this season little did i realize that i'm going about this waiting season all wrong so i'm going to share my personal testimony um 2022 uh was the season where i had i had a lot going for me i was still in my waiting season but personally i felt like my body was the best i was working out i was confident um in just like who i was uh, I was confident in like how I would wear my clothes. I, I re remember just feeling so like on top of the world. Like I remember making clothes and feeling confident and looking beautiful. I felt beautiful when I would wear these certain clothes and things like that. Um, and then it was at the end of 2022 where um, God really came through and shifted me. I feel like I've been born again. And honestly, I do truly feel like I've been born again ever since but uh 2022 even though all of those things were happening for me and i felt beautiful and i felt confident and all of the natural aspects to me was thriving inside of me my personal um thoughts and my th my personal place uh it was just it was going through the most at that time because i needed an outlet i needed something to just let off the steam let off the I couldn't hold this much of pain any anymore. I couldn't go through this waiting season anymore, still feeling horrible every day. Um, so I allowed my, my fashion to speak for me. But on the inside of me, I was struggling because I knew that I'm waiting on something and it's taking too long. Um, and it felt so heavy. So the end of 2022 came around and i picked up my painting brush and i haven't painted if i'm not mistaken i think i haven't painted for two years at that time um so i remember just god whispering to me every day and i remember just feeling like you know there's something different god is doing with me and i would pray every morning it felt like i was being dumped in water every single day it felt like i was being consumed by thousands of waves simultaneously like one after the other my experience um with god in that months i remember my change started happening in november uh, of 2022 and then december january i was taken i feel like i was brand new like god had been doing something so awesome in me i would wake up every day just so hungry and thirsty for God, like nothing else was my priority at this point. When I became, um, when I started to paint and when I started to let my, the real Nat come through, when I started to really truly find who am I? Who, who is this girl that God created? Where is my identity? I promise you, I felt like I knew who I was for the first time in my entire life. I felt like I was not struggling anymore. I felt like I finally understand who I was meant to be and who God created me to be. I will never forget this one um, This one day I was lying on my bed and I was praying and it was such a beautiful, beautiful couple of weeks that I've been experiencing with God. So I already felt like kind of strong already uh, in my faith. And when you are at that place, 
be sure that the enemy will try to pull and poke you every kind of corner i promise you that morning i woke up and i felt like maybe i'm not strong enough maybe i'm not like you know um, as strong as some other people some other woman of god and i i really want to get to that place where i know for sure that i am strong in the things of god um and i just felt like yeah maybe maybe you're not that strong that you need to become more stronger so i remember waking up that morning i was still laying in bed uh, but I, I was still like half asleep and like half awake, if you know what I mean. So at the end of my bed, I saw Jesus standing at the end of my bed, clothed in white. And next to him was a girl with curly hair. And she looked absolutely stunning. She looked absolutely beautiful. But I couldn't really see their faces. I couldn't really see the face of Jesus, but I knew it was him. And I couldn't see the girl's face, but she had this beautiful, beautiful like curls and she looked so confident. The thing that stuck out to me was that she had that confidence. There was such a, a confidence inside of her. She, she knew who she was. She, she, could, she was just like so beautiful and it felt, I felt like I knew her almost. And then I asked God in my dream, because I was like in my dream still, I asked God, who is that? And he said, that's you. Oh my God, I promise you to this day, I like, I still have chills. And that's the moment I remembered who I, who I was. It was the moment that I felt that I was completely saved, changed. I was free. I was so free. And I felt like, Nat, you don't have a, an identity crisis. You know who you are. And this is who you are. And, and immediately after that, I felt the Holy Spirit just minister to me and say, this is who you are. Why are you keep looking for every other kind of word or thing to cling on to when I have called you to be this. This is who you are. You are beautiful. You are confident. You are powerful. You are peaceful. You are humble. You are so gorgeous. Like there were so many words that were filling up in my heart when I looked at this girl who was me. And God kept on putting inside of my heart, this is how I've created you. The only time you feel like you don't know who you are is when you pull away from me. But when you draw near to me, this is who you are. This is who you become. Every aspect of this woman, of this girl that you see before you is you because I created you in this way. So why are you pulling away um, and finding an identity of this world when this world can never give you the identity that I gave you? I made you. So that day happened and my whole transition, I promise you, there. I, there's, not a, um, there's no amount of footage that I can record to tell you what my transition was um, with God and how he just started to change me in so, 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 so many ways. Um, I just felt like giving up everything, giving up social media, giving up like I wanted to just be with God and that is it. Like that's what I've been through um, that few months. But... After that, that experience, uh, I remember I, I would go through like spiritual attacks, spiritual, um, you know, spiritual things that would just try to make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing and like proper attacks, guys. It was not even uh, like things that was made up in my head or whatever. I could feel that the enemy was not happy with me. And in those days, I already knew who I was. So I already had the strength of God. And I knew that this enemy cannot do anything to me because I know who I am. The word of God has been my light, my lamp through every single day. I would wake up, I would be excited to worship, I would be excited to pray. And now my mind had not even thought about the things that I used to think about. Like my, I'm still in my waiting season. I was still, uh, you know, wanting certain things to happen in my life. but. When the change happened and when God started to re, you know, like put in this new desire inside of me, 
I was not looking for the thing that I was wanting so badly. I was not trying so much to, to look a certain way or be a certain way. I was not interested in anything or anyone. At that point, I was sold out for God. And I, um, I think a lot of you would have also witnessed that transition. I think I pulled away from social media. I didn't post things. I took a long break because I just felt like, I'm not ready for, for anything else but God. I needed clarity when I did come back on social media. And at that time, I didn't know if I was going to come back on social media and, you know, create videos and do everything that I was doing previously. Um, but this is how the beauty and the mercy and the love of God comes around, right? I went through that experience. Um, I was going through the month of January, February, and at the end of January, I asked God a question, but the, before I can even come to the end of Jan, I asked my husband a question and I said, you know, we are, you know, influencers online, we're doing all of these things, but uh, this whole thing that's happening with me and he, I was very vocal to him about what was taking place with me and he was seeing the, the change that was happening and, and we both ended up just like building and, and encouraging each other and it was so beautiful for our marriage as well. but. When that whole uh, month happened, um, I asked my husband at the beginning of January and I was like, what do we do with our social media accounts? Because I feel like I don't want to do the same things that I, I used to do. I don't feel like the urgency to just be a beauty influencer or just do like lifestyle content anymore. I, I want to do something that that is purposeful, that God is saying this is what you need to do. And then he came to, uh, he, he said to me, and I felt like this was God speaking right directly through Wesley to me. And he said, I want you to go through this month. And at the end of the month, you will have your answer. And just as he said it, it was. I promise you, and like the whole month I was still trying to figure out about God, must I, must I not? Do I keep the account? Do I delete it? What do I do? And God was silent about that specific thing. I came to the end of the month. I promise you, this is so amazing. Uh, I came to the end of the month and that week, the, I think it was the last day of the month and I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, what do I do? And he said, it was so clear as day. He said, you have an assignment. Do not close your accounts. Do not stop. That's the words, do not stop. So I got my clarity. I was absolutely excited and then I was like, okay, but God, where to from here? And he said, paint. And I, I literally continued painting and that became such a success thing for me and my business and everything that God was going to do in the next couple of months. And I got to do a paint party with my friend and I got to do, you know, become so much more confident in who he called me to be. And all in this, still waiting for the big thing that I was waiting for at the time, still in the waiting season. But now this year, 2023 was the year of surrender. I went through that tra transition and God said, surrender, surrender everything, surrender your finances, surrender your career, surrender your marriage, surrender everything. Stop holding on, Nat. Stop holding on. And I felt like the last bit of holding on, I let go. I let go. And I promise you, it was the best decision that I could ever make in my entire life. I felt refreshed. I felt revived. I felt like there was nothing that I could possibly do for myself that was going to give me a better life. Everything now I was going through, I had new eyes. I could see better. I, I, it was clear to me that I've been living wrong, you know? So Jesus changed my mind and he wanted me to live, not trying to think of the future, not trying to overwhelm myself with the big goal. And you know, I'm big on goals and, and working towards something and that's all good and well. But what I failed to realize was that my day to day was not, um, I was not focused on, on God for today. I was focused on him doing the miracle um, the big miracle that I so badly wanted without 
having an input and doing the work that he called me to do. I wanted to jump out of that season and then just jump into another whole season without going through the experiences, without having a testimony, without having, you know, just the 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 day-to-day -day experiences with him and god is all about the teeny tiny experiences believe me he is all about the small experiences uh, that you can have with him and god works in the most beautiful and amazing ways my year 2023 was a year of surrender i always tell my friends this i tell whoever i can about my testimony about 2023 and it felt like the year of surrender and when 2024 came around, it was the year of favor and abundance. Before I could even know that it was going to be the year of my waiting coming to an end, I didn't realize, I didn't realize at all that, you know, the big things are going to start rolling in. But I was still so excited that I surrendered and I'm still holding on to God's promises. And then now uh, God gave me the practical things to work with. He gave me the ability to see, hey, Nat, you love me, you surrendered, you are giving your life, your breath, your everything to me. But now I'm going to take you to something uh, a little bit more uh, practical because faith without works is dead. So God allowed me to become more mature. I, I wasn't going to just sit in my room and pray whole day, whole night and just be stuck in there. Now he wanted me to come out of the secret place. Um, and your secret place with God is important. It is so important to get into your closet and have that time to be born again and to be, you know, just surrounded by the presence of God. And that's all that I require, all that I want. Um, but then God allowed me to, to become more mature. Um, and now he started to show me that I have an assignment. I can't just stay in my room and be all excited about praying, but not doing the work. So now he brought me to a place of maturity, strength, spiritual stature, spiritual strength. Um, my ability uh, that I had after having that intimate time with him, now I'm stronger. Now I feel confident now. And it's not self-confidence. It's not my own understanding of what confidence is it's not my own understanding of how i'm supposed to look or how i'm supposed to dress now he gave me the ability to to see into my spirit into my soul i'm no longer dressing uh to make myself look beautiful or to make others look at me in a certain way i'm dressing to glorify god everything that i do is to glorify god you know so yeah, God had just like transformed my life from that point. And um, now he started taking me to the practical things. So now he started giving me things to do, like actual things to do, assignments to do. And some of it felt a little bit scary. But when I went through it and I laid it at his feet, he took me right through it. It was beautiful. It was a badge of honor that I got to stick out to my chest. It was like, it was so rewarding. The things that I was doing now was rewarding. And let me tell you, this was still my waiting season. This was still a season where I was holding on to God and, and, and still wanting the thing that I prayed for before. But now when I'm waking up, I'm waking up with purpose. I'm waking up with an understanding of, hey, that's not my focus. My focus is Jesus. My focus is now living today and making sure that whatever God has in store for me today, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. I'm not going to wait for the thing. I'm not going to look for the thing. God is in control of that. So I had that as the big goal in the back of my mind. That was good. I had it on my vision board. I had it on my poster that I stick up on my wall. I had all of those things going for me, but I still did the daily beautiful parts of working, working, practically working, doing the thing that God said I need to needed to do so i would paint every day i would put my business out there i would do the things that god said you need to do so he also brought in the most amazing people in my life uh people that i've known from my past people that i i've known but haven't really you know connected with so there was a strong community of strong people that god started to build around us uh, around me and i was so thankful and grateful for certain relationships that had just blossomed into the most beautiful strong um, heavenly relationships that i have now and i'm so thankful for you know, trusting the process and trusting God in allowing certain people to come into my life and certain people to exit. 
that, that has to happen. Um, God does the pruning and sometimes it's difficult for us to think like why why did this happen or why is it that you know certain people come in at this time and certain people have to go but God is the one who does the pruning and it will happen according to his plan and his purpose and you cannot fight it so 2024 came around and my testimony just started to flourish everything that I put down in my vision board everything that I prayed about my scriptures things that I would write down and things that I would talk to God about without thinking of it it started to roll in one by one and I have just been just soaking in the presence of God, just saying thank you, thank you God, thank you every day for today, thank you for today, thank you for your mercy, thank you for your love, thank you for your peace and your goodness and it's just been the most rewarding life, it's been the most rewarding thing to give it all to God. So coming back to the topic, what do you do in your waiting season? Well, somebody who's been through a lot of these waiting seasons, speaking from experience guys, being without God is miserable. I went through a long time of waiting and feeling like it's never going to come and every day waking up and feeling miserable and feeling like everything else is gonna sustain my emotions, everything else is gonna help me get through the day. And living like that is, is not God's plan for you. He doesn't want that for you. He wants you to live and experience Him in your waiting season not going through the waiting season and then trying to get out of it because that's going to actually prolong your waiting season and let me just tell you i think i did prolong mine because i was stubborn in the beginning i was angry i was stubborn i was frustrated i would take out my anger on everybody else i would just think that the world owes me or people owe me this when that's not the case you are the one who will determine whether or not you are going to have the gifts and the goodness of God if you choose him. You are the one who is at the start of your day making the decisions for your life. Um, I love this saying, I don't know exactly how it goes, but recently I came across it and it says, your decisions today is a direct response of how tomorrow is going to be. Uh, and it also there's another one that says, um, what you do today uh you are going to give birth to tomorrow so you're basically pregnant today with whatever you do because tomorrow you're going to give birth to that so i pray that you are giving birth to the most beautiful loveliest most godly experiences and not horrible miserable um, days because it is so important with how you live every single day. Just hope that this word sticks with you and you know that in your waiting season, you can give it all to God, surrender. My ultimate advice to you is that surrender everything. Don't hold on to anything, even the tiniest thing. Give it to God, give it to God. And then surrender your heart, surrender your life. After you surrender it all, stop going back and asking about how's this going lord or how's that going um i know i surrendered to you but i still want to know how it's going this is where your faith needs to come into play now i'm going to read the scripture that really god pressed upon my heart this morning i opened up um hebrews chapter 3 and it talks about the um, jesus being greater than than moses um and if you know anything about the story you know that moses was the man that god had used in a time to get a company of people across to a, the promised land um but a lot of them didn't enter the promised land and i'm going to share with you why that didn't happen okay so this um, I'm reading Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 7 and it says so as the Holy Spirit says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness where your ancestors tested and tried me though for 40 years they saw and I did. Now, this scripture is basically talking about the time where Moses um, you took the um, people out of Egypt. And while they were, you know, in that season of their life, the waiting season, they were also in that, in the thick of the waiting season uh, because God had promised them the promised land and they were going to come into it if they just obeyed, but they didn't. 
So they were miserable, they were rude, they were just horrible. And a lot of them did not enter the promised land. Um, and this particular portion of scripture is talking about how God did so much for them. If you go back and read um, and you're curious about the story of Moses, you will notice that God did so much for these people. I mean, he split the ocean. He split the waters for them to cross through and go to a land that God had promised for them. But even in that state, they, they witnessed. I mean, I would love to see that. And these people, even though they saw these kind of wondrous, beautiful things that God had done, they were so opinionated and stubborn. They had thought that their way was better than God's way. So they grumbled and they moaned and they were just miserable. So verse 10 says, that is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And that's exactly what happened. They didn't, they didn't enter God's rest. Their children, however, their descendants entered the land um, of milk and honey. In chapter three, verse 19 says, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. This scripture, guys, it basically shares the heart of God. And it says that these people did not enter the promises of God and the promised land because of unbelief. And I feel like this is such a such a big giant that we all are facing in this day and age. Um, and until you understand that your faith in God, your faith in Christ, that's the only way forward. That's the only ability that you're going to have to inherit what is yours. I don't know how much more I can express to you how that changed my life. The way Jesus came in and I knew Jesus. I understand. I understood him. I, I grew up, uh, you know, learning about faith. Uh, but when you put into a position where you want something so badly and he promises you something, but then you, you kind of go through your day to day and you're like, but I can't see the future. I don't know what, when it's going to come. I don't know what's going to happen. That season can be very challenging, but my plea and my heart to you is that trust God, trust him. You are giving him a commitment. You're telling him that I'm giving, I'm surrendering everything to you, Lord. And I may not know the day, the hour, the minute that I'm going to get what I need or I'm going to receive my inheritance. But the fact that I can believe you and trust in you, I'm saying to you, I'm making a statement to you that you are in control of my life. And the moment you do that, you will have the most beautiful transition of your life. And that's what happened with me. I no longer was... Um, holding on to a, a, um, a tangible thing. I was no longer wanting the natural thing. And when that happened, God gave me a new desire. You're not going to feel like this forever. You're not going to feel like this desire is being, you know, every day you're waking up and there's this deep desire for the thing that you want so badly. When you give everything to God, when you surrender and when you have faith that that thing is going to happen, and then... You let it go he immediately gives you a new desire your desire changes it changes immediately your desire for him for a new life for new eyes to see for new ears to hear you become so like i don't even i don't even have the words to explain to you but you become the most beautiful version of yourself that's the reason why you in the waiting season is because god always wanted to just work with you and bring you to that perfect place of maturity of your true identity and work with the inside of you um i'm so thankful now my prayer changes now my prayer is not for the thing that i want now my prayer is father as i'm waiting for what you promised me i pray that this waiting season you will do everything that you want to do with me I may change in the best ways. I may grow. I may learn in the season. Whatever you have in your heart for this waiting season over my life, over my husband's life, I want that to be done in excellence. So that's how I started to pray. And 
I'm, I'm in the best place of waiting and I never thought that I would wait in this way. So my husband and I had a conversation yesterday. We were sitting and talking about the same thing about our personal waiting period um, and our waiting season. And we were just sharing about like the different types of emotions that you can have during the season of waiting and how, how it probably feels for a couple, how it feels for, you know, individuals waiting for big things. And um, so we were just sharing our thoughts and we spoke about something which was very shocking because we were talking about the emotions, right? And we came to a point where we realized there's no longer that, that anger or that disappointment that we used to once feel. We're not hurt anymore. We're not angry. And sometimes you could feel like you're kind of upset with God. Um, a lot of us feel like, you know, God, you promised me this, this and this, and then nothing's showing up. Oh, I can't see any evidence of that. And uh, I never ever want to be in the place where I'm angry and, you know, angry with God. But there was one moment that Wes and I experienced, um, I think it was two years ago, this was 2022, and we sat in the car that one day and we were just talking to God and we said, Father, we are upset, we are angry, we don't know what you're doing with us, we don't. Um, and now when I look back at it, I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> like, I feel horrible. I, I But that... That experience of my life made me look at my personal life differently. It made me trust in God so much more. I am thankful actually that I got to go through the experience of learning. Learning that I must not be so quick to speak. Because the word of God says be quick to hear and slow to speak. And that experience of my life I remember just like crying out to God and just being so upset and angry and miserable and so many other things. But now in this season, I'm like, I know God, like nobody can shift me and no devil in hell can tell me who I am or who my God is because I know him. I've seen him do miraculous things firsthand. I've experienced it. I witnessed it. I've I've been on this journey with him and like I at times it is challenging because sometimes you you tend to want the thing that you want so badly and now it's like but God I do have faith in you but I, I kind of want it like now and then you come back to the place of okay God I'm sorry <laughs> I I'm, I'm waiting I'm still waiting um, but I get to share this with you because we all are part of this journey we all are here uh, alongside each other. I'm excited for all of those that have exited a season of waiting and you are in the place that God wants you to be and you have received uh, your inheritance. Uh, may the next season of your life just be so amazing and may God continue to do amazing things inside of you. And for my girls that are waiting, trust God, surrender. Don't try to get out of it, go through it go through it and don't try to bite your teeth and go through it take it one day at a time let go and let god um, i think that was my personal testimony and i wanted to share that so badly because i know what god did for me and i know i felt real emotions real things that godly people don't feel but i was angry i was upset i was everything under the sun but until i realized that i can't do it on my own will i can't rush a season because I'm not going to learn anything. I'm not going to be established and be perfected for my next season um, if I don't go through this. So I pray that your waiting season uh, is in the hands of God. You take it one day at a time. Do the practical things every day. Worship God. Thank Him for this waiting season. Be more grateful. If anything I've learned in my waiting season was to be more grateful. And that has become a habit that I've been doing every day. I have become the most excited person to be grateful. I am grateful for everything. When I'm literally um, washing my clothes and putting it up on the line, I'm like grateful that I have clothes on my back. I'm grateful for the day. I'm grateful for the weather. I'm grateful for everything. And when you start to love that kind of life and when you surrender everything and not want everything, 
And when you give more to others, when you encourage others, when you become a, such a beautiful presence that God can enjoy, you invite his presence into your heart, into your life, into your home, and you come in closer to the inheritance that God has promised for you. So I pray that this video has been impactful and you learned something from my testimony. I just found like today I just needed to share with you a, a little bit more on my story so that you know that I'm not talking from, you know, bullet points or I'm not talking from somebody else's experience, but I'm talking from the very experience that God has taken me through my waiting season. And it's not over for me. There's so many other things that I'm waiting on God for. Um, and I would love the encouragement and hear your stories and hear how God has been doing and ministering and, and, and showing up in your life. I would love to hear of your personal testimonies if you can share with me in the comments i would love to read it and it will just empower every one of us and that's why we're here that's why this platform is here and we can become that sisterhood that the strong sisterhood in christ that god has called us to be i honestly have a little bit more to share but i'm gonna close this video off here i would love to do a spin-off of this video and continue with the rest of the points that i have on your waiting season um but i just needed to share this with you and i pray that you are going to enjoy uh, and look at your waiting season differently from this point forward. So thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I really appreciate every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos. Comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate all of you. And don't forget to follow me on my social media handles and on Instagram. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.